Most of the animated features that come out these days are computer animated. That appears to be the medium most studios feel confident in investing in. However, regardless of the medium, most of the artists who work on them have a hand-drawn background, and that influence is starting to find its way into the CG movies. Although, believe it or not, computer animation has had a hand-drawn aesthetic from the very beginning. A large part of the reason John Laster was hired by the folks at ILM's Computer Graphics Division is because they wanted their CG animation to have a hand-drawn feel, as they were heavily inspired by the classic Disney titles. Noticing that while primitive at the time, computers were very good at doing geometric shapes, so Laster looked back at Mickey Mouse, who consists primarily of circles and ovals, and designed Andre and Wally B, who were nothing more than a couple of circles and squares. Showing you could successfully bring a hand-drawn aesthetic to computer animation, his next short, Luxo Jr., experimented with giving emotion to characters without faces, something he had previously done with his student film, Lady and the Lamb. Knickknack was especially a throwback to classic hand-drawn animation, opting for a very Tex Avery and Chuck Jones feel and tone. During this time, Pixar was hired by Disney to create a new software that would not only lead to the hand-drawn films being painted digitally, but also successfully combine computer animated elements with hand-drawn animation. Disney had already experimented with this on the Black Cauldron and Oliver and Company, but Pixar's cap system helped bring to light the Australia landscapes and buildings in the rescues down under, along with the iconic ballroom scene in Beauty and the Beast. However, I think where they really perfected it was with the Cave of Wonders in Aladdin. This was an actual speaking character, done entirely on the computer, and they also seamlessly had him fit with a hand-drawn environment, and at first glance, he looks like he's as hand-drawn as Aladdin and Jafar are. They took this to a further level with the stampede in The Lion King, where each individual wildebeest was done on the computer, and yet perfectly felt like they were part of the scene. Tarzan especially took this to the next level by having the Tyler character surfing on CG branches. With Toy Story and continuing for many films after that, computer animated films tended to go for a more pseudo-realistic look. While still appearing animated, directors started focusing on details that almost replicated real life. Finding Nemo actually had to scale back on this when the water looked too real. That was basically the accepted way of designing computer animated films, but in recent years, that has begun to shift. One of the major studios that started giving their films a more cartoony look that harkened back to classic hand-drawn animation was Sony Pictures. When Phil Lord and Christopher Miller came on board to direct Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, they wanted it to look like the animation of yesteryear. The first step was the character designs, which were given a UPA look. UPA, which wanted to break away from the Disney and Warner Brothers look at the time, decided to experiment and focus on simple shapes and sizes. So the characters were very simplistically drawn, and that added a certain charm to the shorts. Simple things on the cloudy characters like no sizes and even their clothes are of the sort previously seen on UPA creations like Mr. Magoo and Gerald McBoing Boing. For the animation, there was more of a Fleischer rubber hose approach. The Fleischers prided themselves in the way their characters moved in any position and weren't bound by bones. It's easy to see that combination with Flint Lockwood. His arms moving about in every possible direction brings to mind olive oil in the classic Popeye shorts. Ditto the way he reacts to things. The way Officer Earl jumps about is even reminiscent of how Popeye moves whenever he eats spinach. Cloudy for Chance and Meatballs is basically a celebration of classic animation techniques. I think that's part of why these films have had such a wide appeal. When Jenny Tadikovsky was hired to direct Hotel Transylvania, he decided he wanted to take what he brought to his television series and apply that to computer animation. Much like Dexter's Laboratory and Samurai Jack, the look and movement of the movie follows the rules of classic animation, specifically Tex Avery. The elasticity of the characters and many of their reaction shots will be right at home with an Avery cartoon, especially during his period at MGM. Seeing the success this has had, Sony Pictures Animation is more and more applying those hand-drawn aesthetics to their future works. The Smurfs is being completely retooled and will look a lot closer to the original comic books, the point feeling like three-dimensional illustrations. And Tartakovsky's upcoming version of Popeye will be even more Fleischer-esque than even the Cloudy films. And this shift is also making its way to the other animation studios as well. The most impressive is certainly what Blue Sky is planning on doing with Peanuts. As was revealed in a recent teaser, the movie will look exactly like the original comic strips, and the movements will be like Bill Melendez personally worked on this. 
Blue Sky has always been very good about translating artists' individual style to their films, whether it be William Joyce or Dr. Seuss. But Peanuts really seems to be taking it to the next level, and I predict this will be the future of computer animation, as it will continue to replicate classic hand-drawn animation, almost to the point where people might not know which is which. Another studio very big on this movement at the moment is Disney. Glenn Keane was the first to try and experiment with making computer animation look like classic animation when he started work on directing Rapunzel. For years, they did tests about how to give the film a painted look. Some of this experimentation was even being done on projects like the cancelled movie My Peoples and Chris Sanders' American Dog, which eventually became Bolt. While Tangle did not end up quite like Keen had originally envisioned it, character movements and background still has a hand-drawn sensibility. That hand-drawn influence would even find its way into movies like Wreck-It Ralph. Little things like splashes were made to replicate hand-drawn animation, and Eric Goldberg's animation tests would play a huge role in getting down the right movements for King Candy. One major step forward was Paper Man, which was computer animation made to replicate hand-drawn animation and done to superb effect. It was an experiment that proved very successful, and later this year, Disney will release a new short called Feast, which utilizes the same technique, but in color. This certainly seems to say that a full feature in this style at Disney could be in the works. Even artists translating classically drawn characters to computer animation have kept that same essence. When making the Looney Tunes CG shorts a number of years ago, director Matthew O'Callaghan and the animators at Real Effects did a superb job of taking characters we know and love, like Daffy Duck, Wally Cody, The Roadrunner, Tweety, and Sylvester, and seamlessly transferring them to a new medium. Yet all the original nuances and comic timing is still in place. Great care has been taken to make these three-dimensional characters occupy the same space as the original hand-drawn creations, and thus there's nothing sacrilegious about this. Of course, independent animated films have also experimented with this sort of animation. The Dam Keeper, a beautiful short directed by a couple Pixar art directors, was animated digitally, but given a look reminiscent of almost crayon drawings. The story is fantastic and perfectly fits the amazing look of it. I think with movies like The Dam Keeper, Paper Man, and Peanuts, hand-drawn animation will be making a major comeback, and it will be thanks to, of all things, computer animation. Contrary to belief, CG animators love hand-drawn and want it to continue. More and more artists are putting their artistic background into the computer and making stunning work that sits hand-in-hand -hand with the classic animation we love. See you next time.